What is up guys, TSL here, back with a brand new video. In today's video, I will be talking to you guys about get property change signal and what we can do with it. Now, first thing we want to do is just insert like a, let's do a part in the workspace and let's have a script in it. Now, let me zoom in so you guys can see this better. And now let's get started. So basically what I'll be teaching you about is a method called get property change signal. Every instance has this method right here. And what you can do is you can detect whenever any property gets changed on this on the part. So for example, if I do let's make a variable for our part, part is equal to script.parent, and then here we have a function and this will be like local function on color change and um what we want to do when the color changes let's just print color changed color changed and let's also how about make the part dot transparency equal to like math dot random of 0 to 0 0.9 and then we can connect this. So basically what we want to do is part colon get property changed signal. And then we want the property that we want to listen to changes on. And in our case, we want the color. And then we want to connect that to our on color changed function. So now let's say, uh, let's just over here, we'll delay, we can do task dot delay and let's delay this by 10 seconds or let's just do seven seconds and this function will just set the part dot color is equal to rgb or here what we'll do is yeah just color three dot from rgb and we'll do z or we'll do 154 comma 82 comma zero or 78 whoops and what this delay function does is it will wait seven seconds and then run this function so if we go ahead and test this once we load in our part over here the color should change shortly you see it did and you see our print uh, color changed fired and also our part well, the transparency is still zero but what we should actually do is so you can see this better let's say task.wait uh, we'll do five seconds and we'll do wall task.wait one second do and we'll just say local r is equal to math.random of zero to two five five and then we'll color, uh, copy this and change the name to g and b so then what we can do is part dot color is equal to color three dot from RGB R G B. And now every second this should change the color should change up the part and we should get a random transparency and this the fire. And as you see that's exactly what's happening. you check the part the transparency for some reason isn't changing though let's just do from zero to one anyways as you saw this printed every single time and you know we don't only we can't only do this with colors we can do this with things like uh, I think we can do it with we can do it with parent material stuff like that. The only thing is, uh, stuff like get property change signal won't actually work on like position, and I don't think it works on C frame either. But uh, any basically anything other than that also works. Also, if you're using attributes like add attribute, and you let's say we call this my attribute, and it's going to be a now yeah, let's just leave it as a string and we save it let's say this will be uh let's just call it attr for attribute you can also do like get attribute change signal 
then the attribute name, which in my case is my attribute, and let's just we'll just call this the same thing. We'll just print um, attribute or my attribute. Um, and yeah, the same thing will happen, but this time let's just say mat, uh, part dot uh, dot my or part colon set attribute and my attribute, and then we want to set it to um, I set it to let's just anything. All right, so now what we should see is after five seconds, we should get in the output that my attribute has changed. And as you see, it um, it worked. All right, guys, so there's one more thing I want to talk about. You might have noticed that there are these things that we can insert into anything in there. Like uh, you have bull value, brick color value, C-frame value, color three value, in value. These are basically just all of our data types with a value at the end. And because these are going to be like instances and you can insert them like I have a bull value now and as you see it, it has a value property of either true or false just like a boolean does now what we can do is we can do um, let's just take all this stuff back we can do get property change signal and we can actually do part here we'll make a local bool is equal to part dot bool value or just dot value and then we'll say bool colon get property chain signal value colon connect on color changed and then here we'll just set um, bool dot value is equal to not bool dot value so this will just set it set the boolean's value to the opposite of its current value every second and then here we'll just do um, We'll say my bool is now colon and we'll just put our bool dot value. And then every second this should change from false to true to true to false to false to true to true to false. And let's just look, my bool is now true, now it's false, now it's true. But you know, there's also um there's also a different thing I wanted to talk about this video, and that is the change event. So we can instead do bool.change, colon connect, and then we can connect the same function. And this will do the same thing. Look, let me show you. All right, true, false, true, and false. Now, an important thing to note is that with um, instance values such as bool value like this, the dot change only runs when its dot value property gets changed. However, if you use if we use this dot changed on our part, it will change whenever any property and I think any attribute as well changes in the part. So that's why for parts for a specific thing you will use get property change signal. And for any instance value, if you just are listening for the value, just use dot changed as it does the same thing. This is a common misconception that I hear a lot of people say that this runs no matter what changes. But with these kind of values, that is not true. With any other case, that would be true. And this is just much shorter, so I like using it. Also, when you use dot changed, and I think property get property change signal as well, but it supplies the new value as the parameter. So if we do new value, we can just print a new value. And let's just change this to one. All right, so anyways, let's see. It is true, false, true, and false, same as it was before. And also if we do this and comment this out, I think the same thing will happen. I don't use get property chain signal that much because, okay, so yeah. That's another plus to using dot change over this when it comes to value. You get the new value supplied already. All right, guys. Well, that is really it for the get change, get property change signal, get attribute change signal, and dot change events. If you enjoyed this video and it's helped you out, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on post notifications so you never miss out on the next video. And other than that, I'll see you in our next one, guys. Bye.